Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our book club on this week. So on this week, we will talk about chapter one. We already started to talk about it on the last week, but it was not not enough time. So we postponed it. So as far as I remember, we described characters introduced in this uh, chapter, and we described Nimitz. Let me ask someone. Jihan, do you remember who is uh, Nimitz? Who is Nimitz? Um, it's uh, owner cat or pet. Yeah, it's um, a mm-hmm. tree cat, right? Yes, it's a tree cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess, but I guess we did not cover it. Uh, the second question about owner Arrington, or we did. Oh, did we cover it? Did we cover the second question? Describe owner Arrington characters. No. Nope. Okay, what's well, Gerard? Could you please? Cover yeah. second question. Describe Honor Harrington. Yeah, character and military background and carry so far. So please, as far as you're comfortable, you can stop at very yeah. any point. I don't have a writing, but I remember he she's very tall and she looks like 22, but she had a, a treatment to prolong their their life. So I think she's something like 40 years T terrestrials. But she looks very young. It's a, it's a treatment that the people from Manticores uh, do to live longer. Also, he has a, a good military background. Admiral Corbusier is her mentor. And, mm-hmm. and he was assigned to have this ship, the Fearless. Is a cruiser, a light cruiser. Do you remember? I don't know. Light cruiser. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I, I'm reading the second book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, you already forgot about this, right? <laughs> yeah, more so... or less. I know the, <laughs> the most important thing about her. Yeah. And somewhere we have an information provided by teacher Lee about this, uh, like, how we call this, like, uh, all these materials about cruisers, their size, their hierarchy, right? So yeah. just now, just now, yeah. Owner was on the light, uh, how we call it, carrier, light aircraft. Light. She was on a, a light aircraft before. Mm-hmm. And then I think she was on a, uh, a frigate. And then she was on a, a super dreadnought as a tactical officer. She's mm-hmm. always had subordinate positions uh, on a variety of ships. And then she got the command of the Hawkwing. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, I f- was that a frigate or dis- destroyer? I can't remember now. Uh, it, uh, I, I remember it was a third in, in the list. So it was a carrier, probably. I, I'm trying to find this um, slide. It's in the journal, in that b- journal document. Uh, Hyperspace ship. Well, yeah, the is... Hawkwing was her first command of a hyperspace yeah. capable ship. So probably now it's a destroyer. Destroyer, yeah, okay. So her first command was a destroyer, and it was capable of hyperspace travel, which is kind of prestigious. So she mm-hmm. got a gold star for being a commander of a hyperspace vehicle. And now she's going to the Fearless, which is also hyperspace <clears throat> capable, and it's a light cruiser. So now she's going to have two gold stars. And her poor XO has zero gold stars. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking about her, as a, she's a female, right? She's a woman. We have to mention her haircut, I guess. <laughs> and we, we had this in the book, I remember. <laughs> so, Sally, do you remember how it was described? Yeah, she had uh, a short brown uh, hair. Uh, cu- uh, cut, and she also uh, has a brown eyes. Um, and she, uh, and she, uh, no one take her as a, as a, as a beautiful. Mm-hmm. And also it was mentioned that uh, her face looks like a, a tri- uh, has a triangle shape. I think also mm-hmm. this was uh, the description of her. Um, um, and she was uh, 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 elastic, like a gymnastic, uh, like she was. She moved. Uh, she moved in um, 
uh, when she moved from um, uh, in the in the, chi- in the ship, she moved uh, very uh, um, uh, gracefully. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't say the word. Yeah. Um, also, she had the self confident and. Um, um, Yeah, so let's, let's speak about this. Why she is like more calm, more self-confident than, let's say, other officers in the, I don't know, in the Manticorean Navy. Fatima, do you remember? So why, why she is more calm? Why she is, how, how we say it, more tempered? Okay, okay may, may I ask Vasans? Vasans, do you remember? So what was the trick? Why she can control her emotion well? I don't know. Uh, oh, don't oh, do mm-hmm. uh, Nim is healthy. Yeah, because she has uh, a trick at, right? A knee. <laughs> so it's kind of a cheating, I would say, right? So it's, it's kind of a being on medication, on something. How we call it? Doping. <laughs> so you have a trick at, so you like more calm in a stress situation. And what do you think? Does it uh, influence her solutions, her decisions that she take in the battle? Vasans, what do you think? If you are calm, does it mean that you will 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 take better decisions that uh, if you are, you know, just a human? Impulsive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it might help. Uh, you know, uh, when you are in a tough situation and the enemy attacks you, uh, sometimes the case makes a uh, uh, catastrophe, uh, uh, bad decision. Uh, yeah. So being calm may help you to lead a better uh, yeah. course. I think- I think if you, you know, if you are a grant, you know, just an infantry, it's it's good to be angry, right? <laughs> it's good to be, <laughs> not to be calm, you know, ah, I crashed your head. <laughs> so, so, but if you are a commander, you have to analyze the situation, you have to, how to describe, make some tactics, right, to predict some moves from enemy side. So you, you probably, it's better to be calm. Am I right, usually? What do you think? Yeah, and some of it is a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you'll notice that she tries not to show any emotion on her face, even in the middle of battle, because your crew is watching your face. And if they see you look um, puzzled or fearful, it will affect morale. So <laughs> she always tries to look confident and... You know, I know what I'm going to do, and oh, this is not a problem. And don't worry, folks. You know, she always has a poker face. <laughs> but I guess it's a it's a good feature for a commander, right? So for yeah. crew, crew is crew is pretty calm, right? Our commander, he, oh, oh, please mute someone. <laughs> Rehab, it's from you, I guess. <laughs> okay, I mute you, please unmute for twenty minutes, moments when we comfortable. So I think it's a good because the crew they are looking on you, right? They are expecting that you are know exactly what to do. We are all safe. Everything is going to be fine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Where well, we have someone have echo, right? Something. Okay. Did we cover this question? Actually, did we forget something important about the career? Uh, that, that, that's most of it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Let's continue. Fatima, can you speak? Can you answer the third question? Question C. She, she, in the chat, she says she can't speak. Ah, okay. I, I'm sorry. I can read chat. I have only one monitor, so please uh, read it something if, if it's important. She, okay. yeah, she may yeah. have a sore throat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jihan, could you please answer this question, third question, or start it? Okay. Um, why is only reporting to the Hephaestus space station? Uh, because um, they are fearing that the Heaven Republic might want to start a war with them. Um, so they are trying to staff up uh, its officer ranks quickly so they could maybe protect themselves. Mm-hmm. So, the, but, but uh, can we say that the reason why she's reporting there 
but she is reporting not to a, not to space station, right? She is reporting to an admiral, right, on the space station. Am I right, Kishirli? So well, she's reporting to a new ship. To a new ship. Okay. The, the ship is there. Mm -hmm. So she's got, to get to the ship. She's got to go to the space station so she can get to her ship because it's it's docked at the space station. Yeah, uh, you, you know, I mean, this, this verb, reporting to, so it's it can be just to human, to so reporting to admiral, reporting to your mentor, or it can be like reporting to a place. In the military, report to means to show up in person, to mm -hmm. go there in person. So she's reporting to the space station so she can report to the admiral so she can report to her ship okay so okay. she's but it's all the whole purpose of it though is she's going to her new ship to assume command so that's right. the key that's the key point yeah okay so we covered a bit that it's a new ship and it's a destroyer right and a destroyer with a light cruiser yeah. uh, uh light cruiser it it was like cruiser right but now she's getting destroyer no, the other way. Oh. She was on a destroyer. Ah, okay. <laughs> so she's going to a more powerful ship now. She's going to be the commander of a little more powerful ship. I see. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we will cover the weapon and all this, you know, reasons why she's docked a little bit later, right? Yep. So I think we answered this. So who is the next question, right? Who is Admiral? And I actually don't know who can speak. Angel, you talked, you said you don't want to. Oh, oh, oh. You Please? want me to talk? Okay. Um, I was Admiral Corpoisa, I think his name is. Um, he had been uh, her monitor of sorts um, during her naive career and also give her orders and efficiently uh, put her out to his office. Uh, to get a new command and not telling her what uh, her command would be. That's what I remember. <laughs> I have no voice clear. <laughs> mm. You didn't catch what I said, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he was an instructor of hers <clears throat> at the military academy. Yes. Kind of like college for officers. Monitor, uh, I think he was so, her monitor. Monitor. So, he, yep, so, yep, so he was an instructor and her yes. mentor. Because he taught her, he knows that she's got talent Yes. for uh, tactics and strategy thinking. She has talent in that area. So he's been kind of watching her career, watching her commands, watching her move up watching yeah. her career and he's been kind of trying to help her as he can so he's kind of a mentor to her and he assigned her to this new ship he's a member of what we call naval command so he's a high-ranking decision maker in the oh. navy command and he's been watching her so he got her assigned to this ship for some reason but he would not tell her why so now she's going, what is he up to? What's he trying to do? Why won't he tell me about this new ship that he's given me command of? So he's kind of a, a father-like figure to her, uh, and he, he has affection for her, and, and he's trying to help her along, but he's, he's got some kind of surprise for her, and she's mm -hmm. trying to figure out what it is. Okay. Right. Okay. Actually, am I right that in the book it was a moment when they said that Admiral he like paid special attention to teach her math or something because she had some kind of a weak uh, features. Yeah, she's not good at math, mm -hmm. but she's good at at imagining things in space. Yeah. You know, a three three D spatial directions. She's very good at that. 
but actual so, calculations of math she's not good at. So he had yeah. to tutor her <laughs> to get her through to make her pass. <laughs> so, so we cannot say that she was a flawless uh, diamond at the beginning. It was just uh, some good features, some weak features, and he, he worked with her to on, on, on that, right? Exactly. He had to help her through her weak courses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good. So yes, as you said, as, as you said, it was kind of a father figure, right? In in her career, in her life, probably. I don't know. We we will learn more. Okay, okay. Let's go on. I think we cover this. So we know that he's her personal. What is important, right? That he's her uh, personal mentor. He has kind of affection to her, he is believing to her, trust her, right? And he also is a high-ranked uh, person in Manticorean Navy, right? So it's yeah. pretty, pretty important, I guess. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. So do we have a volunteer? <laughs> yes, Fatima, please. Yes. Um, is it uh, E, right? Yes. yes, yes. Yes. So what does Ona learn about her new ship? Uh, she only knows that um, there there are some designs should be changed. Some yeah, some design changes um, has to be done to the ship, and also she knows that it's located in the shipyard. That's it. Other than that, she doesn't know what what kind of changes should be done to to the ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's she's going to learn after stepped in to the on the board right right after one mm -hmm. after getting command there yeah? okay do we want to describe uh, this modification now or later yeah we should describe it now because this is this is the main thing in chapter one is what oh. she learns about yeah. her new ship corvorzier's surprise <laughs> 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 okay, do we have a volunteer, Wasans, maybe someone else? Who, who? Yeah. Please. So the changes were made when she was the board and the ship uh, was the short range, I think. Short range and long range. There are two, a couple of uh, weapons there. Uh, but the short range is the powerful one. Uh, the long range is, is that right? Uh, the, the missiles are long range, so they were taken off. They're, they're powerful and long range. You can kill from a long distance with missiles. They took all those out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they replaced it with the uh, short range. Uh, gra uh, that gra Grav gravity yeah. lance. Grav lance. And it can only be used uh, with the... Uh, you go nearer to the enemy ship, but it is impossible when the enemy is attacking you with their long range fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's uh, really a difficult one. So that bothered, uh, bothers her. So she was thinking why they are making such a stupid yeah. mistake. Uh, and that's yeah. that's the main thing. They took away her long range capability and gave her a little a powerful but a very short range. Like you're bringing a knife. When everyone else has guns <laughs> and swords and spears, and you've got a little knife, you know, <laughs> yeah, poison but... knife. You stab them, they're dead, but it's so short. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, it's a very sharp knife, right? And everyone has a gun with, a, let's say, rubber bullets or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's got, a, she's got a poison knife. If she can stab them, they'll die for sure, you know, but yeah, the problem is getting close enough, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have, uh, you know, additional materials that teacher Lee prepared for us. I'm sharing one of slides of this. I think that everyone already have seen it. Uh, so it's on our classroom. And there we have, you know, the, these descriptions of uh, missiles, tor energy torpedoes, and kind of diagram of its uh, range, right? And one thing that is interesting, that is tricky, you know, on the left and right, we have two ships, right? Blue and red fissures, they are ships. So can you notice that they are in a strange kind of direction? <laughs> so they are not looking on each other. So let me 
ask some Vova. Why is there not looking on each other? Why is there side by side? Or how you describe it? Please be allowed. Because they have uh, the guns on. Uh, on, <laughs> on the side, right? On the, on, side. On the sides, yeah. I, I think uh, old ships. Uh, yeah, old pirate ships, old yes. wooden ships. Yeah, it was the same, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's long and all the cannons were located like aboard, right? Not the... the yeah, so it's an interesting vocabulary here, right? The beginning of the ship, we call... How we call it? Uh, the beginning wow. of the ship. Bow and the end of the ship is a stern, stern, bow and stern, right? And uh, how we call these sides? Just boards? Just, just the port and starboard sides. Okay, sides. So all these uh, weapons they are located on the side, sides. But why? Why? Why we did not put them? You know, on the stern or on the bow? Do we? Do do, do you remember? Yeah. Well, they're large. They're just large, and you want a lot of them. You don't, you know, one or two guns. The other guy's going to have a lot of guns. You need a lot of weapons, a lot of guns, because they can block. They can block. They have anti-weapon weapons yeah. also that can block your missiles. So you need mm -hmm. a lot to get through their defense. You need to overwhelm them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So why uh, why do you think they use lasers and you know grazers or how it's pronounced or and grave lance? I mean, why they don't have like usual weapons? Why they don't have you know metal torpedoes or bullets or something? So what is the difference? Why it's not like in the good old times, you know, with the big metal balls? What do you think? Something you don't know yet is that these battles take place hundreds of thousands of kilometers apart. Mm -hmm. These aren't in close like on the Earth. They are so far away in space, you can't even see what you're shooting at. You've got to have instruments that tell you where they are. So you're shooting missiles over huge distances. Bullets and things that go slow, they'll just move out of the way and it'll go past. You know, So you've got to have something that travels fast. So grazers, these things travel at light speed. Missiles, missiles can steer themselves. So if they move, the missile can follow them. So a lot of it has to do with they're fighting these battles at huge distances away. Yeah, another thing what I what I was thinking of it, you know, it's because the space it's kind of a different place than the yours. So we, they they it's very important about this inertia things, you know, all this physics. So the physics is different. If you sending you know a big metal ball probably you will have an action for your ship so it's just another yeah. physic another like place right yeah yeah okay Vova, any thoughts? yes i uh, can remember that it's very it's like submarines you don't see You're right right like, like like on submarines right you you hear something you have some kind of devices but you don't see it with with your own eyes right so you have to calculate right. <laughs> yeah right yep. methodology, yeah there's a there's an energy source you know a hundred thousand kilometers out it might be a ship you know analyze the energy source <laughs> i think it's a destroyer sir Is it our destroyer? No, I think it's the Haven destroyer, sir. You know, it's all it's all just reading instruments, you know, guessing what you're looking at. Yeah. yeah, right. And it makes me, you know, it's all this situation when you don't see your enemy. Actually, it makes me think that all the battles uh, they are take place in your mind, in commander's mind, right? You have a picture in your mind. You just yeah fighting there right uh, and <laughs> physical and, activity not that important yeah. and honor has a talent to keep all of this in her mind that's her talent she's right. very good at that so she's an excellent tactical officer she knows who is where and what they're doing and where they're moving she can keep all that 
straight in her head. That's her skill. Yeah. Calculating the math, she's not good, but in her mind, <laughs> imagining where everyone is and where they're moving, she's very good at that. <laughs> Interesting. So speaking about, we mentioned a few times tactical uh, like abilities and tactic in general. So what is tactic? And what is, what is the difference of strategy? Do someone wants to answer this? So how how what do you think? It's yeah, I, I'm not asking for you know scientific definition, but what do you think? What is the difference between tactic and strategy when we use which? What sounds? I think they are both. The same. Yeah, please. The same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I don't know how to read it well. It's Shaima, please, if you want. <laughs> right, Shaima. Um, I think the uh, strategies about long term and uh, tactics about short term. Yes, pretty 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 good. I think yes. Anyone wants to add something? I think, uh, I, think uh, I think strategy. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please uh, go uh, on. What else? I think uh, I think strategy is a collection of tactics. Mm -hmm. So like a comb combination of like yeah, small tactics. tactics. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's correct. Strategy is long term. Strategy is over the whole war. Mm -hmm. You may have thousands of battles, but you've got a goal over here. And your strategy is how you're going to get to that goal over the entire war. You may win battles, you may lose battles, but you may you, you if your strategy is good, you will eventually win. Right, right. Tactics are short term. They're with inside of a battle. Inside of a battle, what do you do? What tricks do you use? What maneuvering do you use? In this, uh, in these battles, because of the ship design and what we're going to learn about the bow and the stern having vulnerabilities, you want to try to get your ship where you can shoot down their open holes and destroy them quickly and easily. If you don't maneuver your ship correctly, you may not be in a position to cause them any damage at all. No. Also, it may be tricks. It may be, can you hide your ship so they can't see you? And then suddenly you power up and pop out and they go, whoa! And then you blast them before they get their shields up. So <laughs> tactics are what tricks you use to win a battle. They're short term. Yeah. Speaking about tactic and strategy, I remember two quotes, two different quotes. One was, I don't remember who was the after, author, but it was, uh, we are we are lose the battle, but not the war, right? So yep, that's the yep, difference, yep. Right? Yep. right? You can, yep, uh, you can lose a battle and win the war, yep. <laughs> and another one, another quote, uh, it says that uh, good, mi good minds, they think about tactics. Great minds, they think about strategy. But really great minds, <laughs> they think about logistic, logistic. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds, sounds like this. yeah, if you if you run out of missiles, you're you're a little bit defenseless, long range wise. Yeah, so you need to have a good supply of missiles. They took out all of her missile storage too, so she. She's got a couple of small missile. She's got a few missile launchers on the bow or the stern, the bow on the stern, but only mm -hmm. a couple. So she had a lot of missiles that would be good, but they took out her missile storage too. So she's got like two or three missile launchers with a few missiles. So she's right. pretty limited in what she can do in a battle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Okay, let's cover the last question. Do we have a volunteer? And uh, yes, Shai, 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 I already forgot. <laughs> Correct, Shaima. Shai, 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 I'm very sorry. Can you please unmute? It's it's my fault. I, I tried to <laughs> remove this hand. You know, you raise the hand and I click the wrong button. I'm sorry again. <laughs> please continue. Sorry. Okay. No okay. Uh, um, uh, she is five years younger than he is. 
and uh, has a higher rank than he does and is uh, assuming command of uh, a ship that he has been serving on uh, for over two years. And he know uh, uh, this ship much, uh, much be better than uh, she does. But uh, unfortunately, uh, his rank is too low uh, to permit him to assume command of a, a starship yet. Um, this, uh, this is, um, I'm not sure about the answer. Yeah, I think it's pretty much it, right? So I do all the work, right? I know everything about the ship. I'm, <laughs> you know, and now I'm getting some let's say a girl <laughs> right? who, will, who will command me just because i don't know she had someone some fam familiar admiral or something like this if i was an ex executive officer i was thinking in this manner i guess i like uh, arouse your uh, envy <laughs> emotion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would be envy, you know, if someone took my ship, you know, it's my ship, I should command it. <laughs> I guess. Uh, this is a real yeah, life, exactly. this is a real life problem in, in businesses sometimes. You got a lot of senior people, engineers been working at this company for 20 years and they don't promote from inside up. They hire someone outside, so they hire some young person. And they're not an engineer, and they don't know what you do, and they're your boss all of a sudden. It causes problems in real-life organizations when a young, inexperienced person is put in charge of senior people. There's a lot of friction there. They, a lot of people don't like it. Well, yes, yes, yes. Some, but sometimes uh, this, you know, young people or manager from outside, they sometimes they deserve their position. That's, sometimes, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, but we never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we covered the questions, the talking points that we have in, in our um, chapter, right? So uh, we have some time, you know, to talk about uh, concepts that we have, that we learn, right? We can start from the beginning if you want. So let's make it like a discussion or, you know, a, talking so if you want to say something please don't hesitate hesitate but let's let me start or teacher lee if you want we, we can start to describe this okay as you can see the ships are kind of ugly they're <laughs> just they're just long tubes like a submarine they're really ugly uh they've got their engines are at the bow and the stern the front and the back that's where their engines are that's where they're their wedge is generated that protects them from most weapon attacks. Mm -hmm. The weapons are mostly along the side. There's different kinds of weapons. There's energy torpedo launchers. There's missile tube launch, missile launchers. And there's grazers and lasers, which are like energy beam laser-like weapons. So they've got a variety of weapons along the side. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's the main thing about the ships. Yeah, let, let, let me ask a question to our participants. So, guys, what do you think? Do, do these ships, uh, the, do they have gravity inside? So all people just flying inside the ship? What do you think? I think the stern and the, uh, the back side only have the gravity and the, in the middle they don't, right? So, so I think that's gravity only on these uh, edges, right? So not yeah. not in the in the middle. But how to how to operate in in, in without gravity? You know, it's very tricky. If you if you just just imagine that you have to <laughs> do your job and you just flying somewhere without a <laughs> ability to stand. Yeah, uh, uh, as the in spaceship also they actually they move faster. I think. Uh, because like uh, when you don't have gravity, you uh, a, a, as if you are flying inside the the, the ship, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? Uh, I uh, have two um, minds. I think I remember on Paulok uh, or chapter one. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Uh, was right that. that um, Kona was seated, seated, uh, seated, seated, 
Ние то за... То за хедж. То за хедж. Бъдете това за шатъл, right? Но, но, окей. Окей. Гравити weapons doesn't work without гравити. For what you need гравити weapon if you can't Yeah, I, I understand. So if you have a gravity weapon, so that it means that we can generate uh, gravity. That's why we don't have gravity on our ships, right? We we have it, right? Okay. So the answer is that we have a gravity inside the ship. If I if I'm right, usually correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah, uh, but we don't have it, you know, just in the space, right? If you are in space, you don't have gravity. So that's why we have another slide here, right? So we have a space ship on the left it's a blue sink with artificial gravity and we have a ship on the right with a artificial gravity but a tube <laughs> inside it's a, it's like in space right so you you are you flying there we say <laughs> so wait you're weightless we say you're weightless you're weightless right so, so you, you float <laughs> so and we we can see a funny picture of the skeleton of a body <laughs> moving there, right? So so, so do, 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 what we just said that um, owner she had a place in the in this ship uh, close to the hatch. It was written in the book. Do you remember why? So it was a special place, kind of. <laughs> well, why it was special? Um, my, uh, uh, because she was high rank. High rank, yes. It was a kind of a sign of respect. So the commander is the last who boards the ship, and the, oh, am I right? Actually, the last who boards the ship, and the first who uh, leaves the, yep. leaves the ship. Okay. Yep. <laughs> nice. And airlines are like this too. Well, airlines are a little different. Airlines used to be, uh, they our, our airlines used to board from the rear to the front. Mm -hmm. So people that sat in the back would get on first because they, and that was so you could board faster, right? People in the back go all the way to the back and people in the middle go on and then the people at the front go on. It used to be like that. And everyone was, it made sense. But then they changed it. The VIPs, the first class, they go on board first. And nobody can go past them because they're blocking the front of the plane. And when all the first class get seated, then people can go to the back of the plane. So the first <laughs> class get on first and yeah. get off first. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, you know, not fair. So in, in this case... They let everyone else get on first because they go away from the door and then she boards last because she sits by the door. So she gets to board last, but she gets off first, which yep. is a convenience for a senior officer, right? Right, right. They're because in a hurry. Probably yes. they, they time is more important, right? So I, yeah. I guess that, that's the reason. Exactly, yeah. Okay, are we going to discuss this slide or let's go to another? Teacher Lee, what do you think? That covers everything. Bow, stern. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk about the wedges on these side walls. Do you understand this concept, guys? Is, do, do we have a volunteer to talk about this? So it's kind of a shield, right? Can we say that it's a shield for, for a ship? The, the, this, is, this is a little hard to understand, but you don't really need to know the physics. Just push the I believe button. But the way these ships go in hyperspace, faster than light, kind of in a parallel dimension, is they, their engines are designed to generate a, a powerful wedge above and below, and they're angled, so it's kind of a trapezoid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the front is, the opening at the front is small, and the opening at the rear is large, and they're just two parallel wedges okay yeah it almost like a pyramid 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 right like a pyramid on its side almost yeah. and we and we cut off the top yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
So, and when it travels, and, and what it does, it, I, I think my understanding is what it does, it actually generates a tiny black hole in front of a ship. And that black hole pulls the ship towards it. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. keep moving that black hole in space, so the ship is pulled through space at very high velocity. So the, the physics of making this black hole, this tiny black hole that pulls the ship forward at high speed, it makes this wedge in space. And this wedge is impenetrable. No weapon can go through this wedge. It's some kind of energy force that nothing can penetrate. Right. So from the top and the bottom, they can't be hurt. They can't be attacked. Okay. Yeah, and we have a diagram. We have a graph for this, yeah. right? So they're back. They can't be attacked in the back, and they can't be attacked in the front, only on the sides. Mm -hmm. Now, on the sides, they can generate an artificial shield called a sidewall. And those are pretty powerful also. They'll block missiles. They'll block everything but a gravity lance at short distance. So if she can get close to their sidewall... She can blast them and destroy them through the side, but she's got to be very, 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 very close. <laughs> Normally, their sides are protected. Their only weaknesses are the ends are open. The front and the, the end are open holes. So missiles have to go into those open holes or they have no chance of damaging the ship or lasers and grazers. Sh missiles can maneuver. But lasers and grazers are straight lines. So if you want to hit them with a grazer, you've got to be right in the front of the back and shoot right down the hole. Missiles you can steer, you know, so yeah. if, you, if you have enough time and your technology is good. Okay. Um, I, I, already, I have not read much in the book, but I already have an anticipation, you know, that this gravitation lens, they will be very important. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a lifesaver at some point. The question is, how do you save your life? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Okay. okay, Warshavsky sale. But I don't remember. Was it in our chapter already, Warshavsky sale? Probably not. Jihan, what do you think? Do you remember? Uh, we no, haven't it's... mentioned this yet. Yeah. Yes. From this slide, uh, everything was new after this. Yes. One. So it was not in, in the book uh, yet, right? But I think we have time to cover this. Yeah. So, now what, so... I, what I didn't mention, let's go back to the previous slide. Uh, the engines that generate these wedges, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is done in normal space. And these engines are called impellers. Mm -hmm. Impellers. And impellers like a blade, uh, a fan blade. Those are impellers or propellers. Yeah, we have so, them on the ships right, right? now. Yeah, impellers. yeah. So these engines don't have propellers, but they call them impeller engines because they're like the screw of a ship. So these move them through normal space. So you can attack each other when you're on... <clears throat> Uh, impeller engines. You're in normal space. Now, next slide. Okay. Now, when you go into hyperspace and you travel faster than light, those engines don't work in hyperspace. Mm -hmm. In hyperspace, they have another kind of engine, and we'll learn later that they, that they have uh, what they call alpha and beta nodes on the ship, and those allow the ship to generate these Warshawski sails. And when they go into hyperspace, they use gravity waves, kind of like the wind, and they open these Warshawski scale, uh, sails, and the gravity waves push them along, kind of like the wind blows a sailing ship along. So it's really a, a sail, right? Like, like on the ship. <laughs> it, it acts like a sail, and they can tune them to different gravity waves to go in different directions. <laughs> mm -hmm. nice. So use them when they get... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that they use this Warshawski uh, when they get into a wormhole. Correct. When they go through the wormholes into hyperspace, this is their method of propulsion. They mm -hmm. sail the winds. 
they say all the gravity waves. So the author has tried to kind of mimic the old tall ships yep. and yep. use those concepts for this new universe. So I thought that was kind of interesting, the way he did that. <laughs> Actually, you mentioned before that author uh, always connecting things like with real life and sci-fi part, right? So uh, yeah. there are many, many parallels. So a uh, moment of geography. Do you know what is Warsaw? <laughs> it's a capital of Poland. <laughs> so, so it's a city, capital of Poland. So we, we can understand this. So like... Warszawski is a Polish name. Yep. Yeah. So these sails were named after the inventor, the discoverer of this technique was named Warshawski. So they named these the Warshawski scales in honor of the man that discovered them or invented them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what else uh, for today? So there we have what we discussed before, different types. We call them types and sites, I guess, right? Yeah, types, oh, sizes. Types. Sizes. Yeah. So so she's been on a destroyer before. Yeah, it says she, on the she, left side. Yeah. I, I think one. she was on a, a super dreadnought, I think, as as a tactical officer, I think. Yeah. And now she's on a light cruiser. Yeah. Okay, the let light me light cruiser's real small to the left, it's a little bit small. So she's on a you know, one of the smaller ships right now. Yeah, let me ask someone a tricky question. So she was in a super dreadnought once, right? And now she is on a light cruiser. Am I correct? So is it downgrade, right? So it's a kind of a opposite to promotion. Am I correct? <laughs> so she she used to be on the big ship, right? And now she is on small ship. So why should we call this promotion, guys? Can you answer? <laughs> because now she uh, is the commander of this ship. Before, <laughs> yeah. yeah, before she was just a um, a subordinate, the, a lower yeah. officer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So now the ship is smaller, but she is a full commander, right? Full captain. So it's it's smaller, but it's mine. <laughs> so is that that's why it's promotion? Yep. We have a there's a famous poem called mm -hmm. Inferno. And the person that wrote it, his name is Dante, the poem Dante. Mm -hmm. And in the Star Trek episode, Star Trek quotes a lot of Shakespeare and Dante. And in one of the movies, Khan, the bad guy, is, is being defeated by the good guy. And there, well, at, at one point, he's being ex exiled to a... A horrible, a horrible planet that's really harsh living conditions, and and he said, "I'd rather rule in hell than serve <laughs> in heaven." <laughs> I understand the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's better to be a main one in a bad place, right, <laughs> than yeah. than, a, than someone. On the bottom of the chain, on the bed, exactly. good place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have very few time uh, left for, for our class. So if we did not cover something about chapter one, if you have a question that you want to ask, you know, it's time to do it. If no, I have some admin info I can, I can share. So do we have any question? But uh, just... To say, just uh, I wanted to say, okay, a, a little bit of information. So, if you have any questions when you read the book, so don't hesitate. Post your question in our classroom. Post them in our Telegram chat. So we are there, and Teacher Lee uh, always uh, answer, right? So uh, you probably noticed it that I um, ask it like many stupid questions when I read this and nothing bad happened. You know, I just got my answer. <laughs> and there was a funny episode when, you know, when I asked the question, so I was reading a book, I, I found some strange kind of description and I asked teacher Lee, but the explanation was on the very next sentence, but I, <laughs> I have not read it. I already asked, <laughs> but I was not punished, you know, I escaped it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't worry don't hesitate it's um, like opportunity that we have and it's a 
precious opportunity actually and another thing about these assignments i uh, i hope you enjoyed you know quizlet um, how we call it modules with idioms or something uh, and if you are a volunteer to take take this role to prepare a list of idioms for the next chapter just write this in the chat you know and we will know that we have a person who, who can do this Okay, and uh, also um, this opportunity about voice recording, right? Re read and record, we call it, right? Voice recording. So if you want to practice, and I think it's a good opportunity, just choose, you know, a paragraph of text that you have, I don't know, that you like or that you have, which one you have challenge with, you know, and post it in our classroom. So we will, uh, I guess we will provide a feedback for your recording, right? Well, I guess it's all I, I had, I have, <laughs> I had to say. Tishli, do we have something else to mention? Um, no, just what you said. This is a space opera. It's science fiction. There's going to be a lot of strange terms. One, you've got to learn about ship terminology, the bow, the stern, the port side, the left side's the port side, the right side's the starboard side, destroyers, cruisers, dreadnoughts. You're going to learn a lot of terms that are probably strange to you. Don't be intimidated. Don't be overwhelmed. I've given you some references that you can kind of see where they are in the hierarchy. And these are terms in real life. So you're learning real vocabulary words when you learn these ship types. Our Navy has cruisers, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, battleships, aircraft carriers. I think the British Navy or the German Navy might have dreadnoughts. These are real vocabulary words. So you're not learning useless words like Harry Potter, Dementors, <laughs> and, you know. Uh, these are real world words you're learning. So you're learning good stuff. You're going to be ready to join the military when you finish the first book. <laughs> You'll know the yes, ranks, sir. the ship types, the weapons, <laughs> the strategy. You're going to be ready to go to war when this first book is over, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but not, not only that, do you remember, we have a um, description of honor of your cat, so you know, all these funks, and <laughs> I, I think it, it will be, we will, we will, it will be very beneficial for us language-wise. If we do this scrupulously, it, for sure it will be. And this author likes to describe people. He'll tell you their eye color, their hair color. He <laughs> loves to describe people. So for the ladies here... You you can picture you know their blonde hair and their blue or green eyes and they you know so he talks about the you know the aesthetics of the characters also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we can call it a day. So for the next class, for the next week, right? We have uh, another cap chapter. I think let's try to have uh, another one for the next week. So it's it's good like it looks like a good pace for now. Maybe later we will speed up uh, as. Uh, we, we, we get more familiar with that, with the story, with the character, so we will speed up. But for now, one chapter is a good uh, pace. So um, post your uh, you know, suggestion, questions on our um, Telegram chat or classroom. You are always welcome. And see you next week. <laughs> okay, next Tuesday. Thank you so much. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for Thank attending. You. Thank you. <laughs> I'm 